We started with chapter 17. And chapter 17 started with the law of charges. The law of charges is a basic concept, but it is one that we continue to use throughout this semester with various definitions and things like that. The law of charges. Sims? Like charges attract, unlike charges repel. Very basic concept. Like charges repel, unlike, oops, but, uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> it's a good way to start. Oh, well. <laughs> How about like charges repel and unlike charges attract? Who do we have to blame on that one? Was it Sims or me? I think that was. Is it? Yeah. That's uh, sad. Sims. That's that. no. It's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. It happens. When we talk about charges, what basic concept are we talking about when we say the charge of an item? Song. Um. Uh, sure. Uh, what, are we, what are we referring to when we talk about the charge or something? Uh, sure, we could be referring, referring to electrons. Uh, what do we know about the charge of an electron? It's negative, okay? So we have this concept of a negative charge. We have a proton which has a positive charge. So when we're talking about charges, we're talking about negative and positive charges. We also have the concept that charge is quantized. Mr. Smith, what's the equation that illustrates the quantization of charge? Q equals N. Um, times E, the fundamental charge. Q equals N times E, the charge on anything equals N times E. What is N? Hello? Uh, Mm -hmm. mm. Well, sort of. <laughs> Help them out. And Puja. It's a number of electrons, or it could be a number of protons, right? So it has the point here is that it has to be an integer, and it's an integer number of protons or electrons. What is E, the fundamental chart? And um, is either plus or minus 4.6 times. 1.60 times 10 to the negative. Yeah, the full zero there. Um, and this is the charge on a proton or electron. And this shows the quantization of charge because the charge needs to be integer multiples of uh, protons and electrons. You can't, for example, have half electron. Coulomb's force, the electric force between the two charges. What is the equation that counts for the electric force between the two charges? Um, uh, the electric force equals K times the uh, first charge and the second charge over the distance between the two charges squared. Good. I'll we'll get some specifics in there. But this is the electric force that exists between any two point charges, K, Coulomb's constant, or Boltzmann's constant, 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Uh, the two charges, charge 1 and charge 2. Let's review R. Class, R is not. It is. Let, let's try that again. Class R is not. It is. The distance between the center of charges of the two charges. This is especially a confusing class because R sometimes is. Right. By definition, R is not the radius. It is the distance between the center of charges of the two charges. But yes, sometimes it does work out to be the radius. Please remember that force is a vector. Because of that, you may need to break forces into components and some forces, et cetera, et cetera. In addition to that, please remember that the force of gravity is negligible for atomic particles. Negligible. Lindsay means? Williams? Uh, it doesn't affect 
it's small enough where it doesn't make any have a, a, an effect. We can negate it. And what are atomic particles? Rubber. Um, so ah, uh, something that has a charge could not be a. Say again. Small enough mass, yes, but I'm, I'm looking for more specifics. I agree with that. That's what makes it negligible, Pooja. Protons, neutrons, and electrons, anything on the atomic level of that sort, although the force of gravity would not be negligible for a neutron. Just to point that out. Why not? Because there's no electric Because there's no electric force, clearly. The electric force isn't going to be much, much greater than the force of gravity. Good. Uh, we have the basic concept of the electric field. The equation, the general equation for the electric field, Kurt. Um, is it electric field equals uh, the electric force over the charge? It is the electric force per unit charge, the basic general equation for the electric field. This makes the dimensions on the electric field chart what? Um, it's just You could just figure it out. Force, force dimensions. This is just so you know, this is one of the reasons we review. I And just to point out, this is all stuff that we've learned before, but I do understand that not everything is remembered. It is Newton's force per unit charge, Newton's per Coulomb. Who can tell me we have another dimension that we could use, another set of dimensions we could use for the electric field. Not newtons per coulomb, but rather. Please. Rodberg. Volts per meter. Volts per meter. It's right there on your table of friends. This is, again, the general equation for electric field. Oh, uh, an electric field is defined by what type of particle? Lily. Ah, uh, but I need to know more about it. There's, it's not enough for me. Uh, since the key here is that's a small positive test charge. The, the electric field is always defined by a positive test charge. We also have the equation for the electric field that surrounds a point charge. What is the equation for the electric field that surrounds a point charge? Go south. K, or well, the electric field equals K times the charge over R squared. Boltzmann's constant times the charge divided by R, the distance between. Now, this is the center of charge and whatever point you're talking about for the electric field. And again, this is the equation for a point charge. So this is the E field, the electric field that exists around a point charge. And again, you need to make sure you are aware that the electric field is a vector. Again, you could break it into components and sum the electric fields. So this describes the electric field that we figured out, for example, around a positive test charge or a positive point charge, because if we take a small test charge and we put it at different locations, you will discover that it is repelled from, and each of these lines should be the same length, but I ran out of space. Um, and so this is the, the graphical depiction of this equation, the electric field around a point charge. That is chapter 17. Chapter 18. Chapter 18 introduced the concept of electric potential energy. So we have the change in electric potential energy in a constant electric field. What is the change in electric potential energy in a constant electric field? Jesse? Um, um, negative charge times electric field equals delta D. Delta, delta D. Displacement parallel to the electric field. Great, so delta D, please realize, is the displacement parallel to the electric field. 
Uh, and this is only true for a constant electric field. So we have one equation for the electric potential energy in a constant electric field, and that is the change in electric potential energy. And notice that electric potential energy is a scalar. All forms of energy are going to be scalar, so unlike the electric field, I'm sorry, yeah, the electric field and the electric force, which are vectors, energy is a scalar, which makes it a little bit easier to work with. We also have an equation for the electric potential energy that exists between two point charges. The electric potential energy that exists between two point charges, H. The distance between the center of charges. And notice that that is not squared. So notice the similarity between these two equations. This is the electric potential energy that exists between two point charges. And again, just like the force of gravity was negligible for atomic particles, the, the gravitational potential energy is negligible for atomic particles. Let's see. We have electric potential difference. What is the symbol, Dan, her, for electric potential difference? Delta V, the electric potential difference. What is the general equation for electric potential difference? Emily X. The change in the electric potential energy per unit charge is the electric potential difference. And again, this is the general equation. Uh, dimensions for electric potential difference. Christina. Um, volts. volts. What is a volt equal to? So a second. It's not going to be one over coulombs because the electric potential, the change electric potential energy isn't going to have no dimensions. Yes, that's correct. But the, ch the charge is going to be in coulombs. So what's electric potential energy? Joules. So a volt is a joule per coulomb. And again, this is the general equation for electric potential difference. Uh, we also have, just like we had two equations, one for a constant electric field, one for between two point charges, we have an equation for electric potential difference for a constant electric field and for a point charge. Please give me the equation for the electric potential difference in a constant electric field. Meredith. Again, this is for a constant electric field. And note the similarity between this equation and the equation we just went through for a constant electric field. It's just missing the Q, which means that missing the charge, which means that the displacement is parallel to the electric field, so on and so forth. We also have the electric potential difference between a point infinitely far away and a point r distance from a point charge. What is that equation? Do you follow? Um, K times the charge over R. Uh, uh, it's just over R is generally okay. the, the way it works out. And again, this is for a point charge. And this is the electric potential difference that exists between a point infinitely far away and a point R distance from that point charge. 